What's up next? Venice. Our fridge does not work on gas anymore. I'm stressed. been here five ten minutes these flies midges something are all over the windows some even got inside already we've had to move it was a really beautiful spot and we were looking forward to seeing sunset there and it was very nice but just after we parked a tractor of sorts came and was cutting the grass and needed us to move so we have to find somewhere else. Hashtag van life. So our next option is 14 minutes away or 26 minutes away. We decided we'll try the 14 minute route. The reason Google didn't recommend that one and rather the 26 minute, it seems, is this floating bridge. Now that sign there that says 6 ton. We're less than 6 ton. He made it! Arriving on the other side, you see this sign that says two tone marks. Formative if it's not on the other side. What's up next? Venice. And what did you just get over? I'm trying to find how do we get into Venice, how much it'll cost, and how do we pay to, you know, get a bus. And in my research, I came across a tourist tax that they were apparently implementing in January of this year where to enter Venice you need to pay because they're very overwhelmed with tourists and days where they were expecting more tourists they were gonna make it more expensive and days when they're expecting less tourists less expensive to kind of encourage people to not come when they're a bit overwhelmed because it's not very good for the actual city so I was like right how do we pay this because there's one road in and out of that island and if you don't pay it and you arrive there the police can fine you like 400 euros so I was like how do we pay it and I was looking and looking and reading and reading and there were questions and answers and loads of them about everything but not how to pay eventually I found like one sentence that said it was meant to start in January however it's been delayed until next year so luckily we don't have to worry about that but we still need to find out how do we get in how do we get around what's up also it's raining so that's fun. What's well, being just outside Venice, we also come to the point that we are gonna leave Italy soon and are gonna come into that area of Slovakia, Croatia, Albania, North Macedonia, all those countries, right? And we more and more realize that this is not quite easy. Spain, Italy, France, they were all easy and like well-organized areas for motorhomes. In Croatia, there's basically no free motorhome areas. Anything that you can find really is campsites that you have to pay and you will have to pay quite a bit. The problems come even more when we get past Croatia to the countries that are not in the EU because there both our phone contracts don't work. Motorhome areas for free don't exist. There's maybe one per country that lets you empty your toilet. Just for you to note, we started the whole YouTube thing very spontaneously. We have my laptop and will have to be plugged in so that we can actually edit. That again means that we as with the caravan have to be plugged into the mains. Otherwise we can't edit. Also we need internet to edit. We need internet to get the music to edit. We need internet to upload the videos. If you are not hearing from us, you know we're in the deepest nowhere and we just don't have a way to upload anymore. We do plan to edit a whole bunch of videos before entering those countries, have them uploaded. However, we probably won't be replying to comments for a month or more because we won't have internet. Then there's also the problem of probably a lot of these non-EU countries have different currencies. Croatia just got the euro, like this year. this year. We don't know the rules on wild camping, but if it's like Croatia and police come and ask us to move when we're parked somewhere, we probably don't have a way to find another campsite because we use Park for Night to find our place to stay and Park for Night offline mode is terrible. Add all together? Sounds like a big adventure ahead of us, but we're not quite there yet and we haven't quite finished research yet. But hopefully we don't have to spend our entire budget on campsites because campsites are expensive. I'm stressed. <laughs> There's so much to plan and think about. Nyatas, car stickers, visas, road tolls, wild camping rules, COVID restrictions.
And so we're in Venice. It's even stopped raining. And it's so warm that we can in t-shirts now. We thought it would be cold and raining. at this moment where we were walking and we wanted to cross the road, the water road and there was no pedestrian crossing, no, no bridge so we need to find a pedestrian crossing first. <laughs> it's just such a... you first gotta be aware of that, you know? Of course when you're crossing an actual road, yes you should use the pedestrian crossings <laughs> but if you don't want to you can just cross. You're putting yourself at a bit of risk but you can. Here, that risk involves jumping into the water. Jam in Venice is definitely still a thing. What a mess! For some reason they also have left side traffic. Those gondolas, by the way, cost about 100 euros per half an hour. There are loads of tourists here. It is packed. There's a few bridges that are like super packed and there's just... It's really difficult to get through. If this isn't high season, I don't want to be here in high season. And I completely understand why they're making a tourist tax.
a biking lane all the way to München from Munizia. Nuts! My finger is finally better, it seems. It's still quite red, as you can see, but it doesn't hurt anymore. I've stopped putting the antibiotic cream on. Three months, six countries of finger infection. I turn that fridge onto gas, it'll not light. In other words, it won't cool. Super annoying because summer is coming and we can't actually cool the fridge as long as we are not plugged in or driving. And I have watched plenty of videos. And our problem that we have is not in it. Which is that the ignition, the little spark, is not doing a spark. And just right away says it's not working. And I have searched on YouTube, no idea how to fix it yet. I've taken two covers off. Well, this one I think is not really important, but I thought I'd have a look anyways, because this one looks completely different to anything that I've seen on YouTube. Classic problem. I do not see things that I was expecting. There's one million ways to fix it, so one million things that could be broke. And me not knowing anything about gas and Haley neither, we have decided, okay, we're gonna go to somebody who knows such things. Luckily, we're still in Northeast Italy, where there is a lot of places that deal with campers. When we looked it up first time, there was a place in this town where we are. We're gonna go tomorrow. Today is the 1st of May and it's a bank holiday and we're gonna see whether they can help us or not. I would hope they can and I hope it's not too complicated. But even if, it, we figured it's a very good town because there's motorhome areas where we can dump our stuff, there's Lidl and Aldi close, we have good parking options, everything that we need to just wait the time out to get our fridge fixed before we go to Croatia and Albania and all those countries where we figured things are a bit more difficult. We just went to the first mechanic nearby and we went to talk to the guy and he was like, wait a moment, I don't speak very good English, I get someone who does. His daughter. His daughter, perfect English, translates amazingly, turns out they don't have the part so they gave us the address of a mechanic five minutes away who will have the part that is needed to fix our fridge. And then on the way out, a daughter, she was like, so how are you here? Why are you here? And we said we we're traveling for a year on our gap year with our camper. And she's like, oh, me and my partner also have a camper. Do you have a blog? So we gave her the Instagram. We have a travel llama Instagram link to the description and yeah it was a very nice experience and now we're on our way to the next mechanic and hopefully we can get our fridge fixed just went to the second place this one was a motorhome repair parts shop however the mechanic wasn't in today so the woman there gave us an address for another place which is a gas specialist, which should be what we need. Hopefully <laughs> they're in. Everyone closes at 12 and it is five past 11 now. So hopefully they won't send us to another one. He opened this, looked at it apart, sprayed it with a rust remover and it works. So the problem was it's dirty. <laughs> and now it works. <laughs> and he didn't even want us to pay him for that, so. Because it took like two minutes. Yes, it took two minutes. He literally opened it sprayed it, done. And yes, it could be that problem, it could be this simple, but it doesn't have to be really, it can be so complicated from all what I read. Let's get out of here and uh, find what we're actually gonna do now, because like, I was planning nothing really, I mean, I did expect the worst. Three days of waiting to then hear, oh no, the part that we need for replacing is still not there. Our fridge works. Because the fridge was not working on gas and we weren't driving very much, the fridge was quite warm and so we got mold and that's not great. So I am now going to clean the fridge and flee this end of the fridge drama. I've already started to empty it, there's part of the shelves, there's all the stuff, here's a bucket of soap. End of soap? Yeah. 